Okay, can you read it without problems? Is it big enough? Okay, cool. Uh, I can't use microphone because I will be coding, because then I can look at the screen and also stressed. So my name is Grzegorz. Uh, three months ago, at similar Ruby Meetup, I was presenting five not so random Ruby tips because they were all related to enumerators. Today, my topic is creating objects. Uh, as it seems not to be so interesting, wait a few minutes and you will see that it's more complex than, than you can imagine. So, let's start with something simple, hash. Hash is one of the most commonly used class in Ruby language. So, the basic way we create hash is like this. Then we've got empty key value store. But we can populate it with some data since the beginning. We can use not only symbols, but also, for example, class. Or we can use uh, another hash as a key in our hash. We can use basically any object in Ruby as a key in hash. Uh, but there are many other ways to, creating, uh, to create hashes. For example, I can use hash.new, and then I can provide some value, for example, 0. This hash is empty, but if you check, for example, any random value, it has 0, because I provided it as a, as a parameter to hash new. So it's the default value. If now I override it, then my hash consists of this element. But any other element is once again zero. Uh, this was, uh, I think Michael, one or two months ago, talked about it a bit deeper, so you can check the, the video on YouTube. I will show you another way of creating hash, which is using square brackets. So let's say I want to hash, and then I will put a, one, b, two. And now it uses uh, odd elements as a keys and even elements as, uh, as values. Now, this is, not very, uh, this is not very comfortable way of creating hash. But for example, if I say, if I have two arrays, array, array, two, one. Ah, sorry. So I've got two arrays, and now I want to have an, a hash where A, B, C will be keys and one, two, three will be values. So I can iterate over array and I can create hash out of this, or I can do something like array two, zip, array one. Then I've got, then I've got an array where, where I have already uh, grouped elements. Now I can do something like flatten, and now this is already one array. Now, if I use hash and then square brackets, and I will use splash operator, hash. And I use splash operator, it creates a hash of two arrays in one simple line of code. Uh, now this method, uh, it seems quite magic syntax, but this is not nearly as magic as you can ima imagine. Let's say that I've got my own class, class my hash. And I want to, I want to define uh, the same syntax. It's very easy. I just define cell dot square brackets. Right. And now I can read my hash, one, two, three, four. And it returns, uh, it returns array in this example. So that was tip number one, creating hashes. Number two, creating arrays. Uh, arrays, once again, are very simple objects uh, and very commonly used. So this is the basic way we create arrays. Now, if you want to create arrays of strings, we usually do something like A, B, C in single or double quotes, then we've got array. If we don't want to type quotes, there's a much simpler way, which is something like this, and we've got the same result. If we replace parentheses with curly brackets or square brackets or something else, it will still work. And if, if we replace letter W with I, we have symbols instead of strings. Now, there, is, uh, there are another ways of creating arrays in Ruby. So we've got array new, and it takes two parameters. First parameter is the size of an array, and the second parameter is the default value. 
Now there is another, yet another way of creating an array, which is something like this. Array and then parentheses. So this uh, turns nil into, into empty array. It will turn number one into array consisting of number one. And it will take an array once again into an array. This is very useful if you don't know what parameter comes to your method. If it's nil, if it's number, if it's string, if it's whatever, and you need an array, you just do it this way. Now, how it happens that something which is, which is not a method, which is a class, can, can, can work as a method? As it appears in Ruby, you can create methods that start with capital letter. So let's say I define my method my hash args. And now my hash uh, is a constant. If I provide here one to three, then I will, then I will have an, an array of results. So the same happens with array. Array itself, this is a class, but if you put parentheses, it functions as a method. So Ruby basically first checks the constant, if it, uh, if it exists in the table of constants. If it doesn't, then it checks if it's a method. Now, that was number two. This was creating arrays. Now let's create some classes. Uh, as you know, the basic definition of creating class is something like this, class my error. Uh, this is very basic way, and this is the way that almost everyone creates classes, but there is another way, which is class.new. Of course, class itself has its class, which is once again class. So in Ruby, class is a normal object. That's why it has initializer. So we can use method new, and it takes one parameter, which is which is parent class. So now I can raise this. Uh, this is anonymous class. It doesn't have a name, but since classes names are constants, now under the name my new error, I have this new class. Uh, and just to show you that is a, yes. Oh, no, it's not runtime error. Present it. Okay, anyway, it shows, uh, it shows the message. It behaves exactly like a runtime error. Uh, so this is, this is the way of creating classes. And just so that it's not only class new, but also you can provide something more useful here. Now I got a warning because I redefined my class, but I can run my error new. Show me. Ha, huh, I screwed something up. Excuse me? Ah, yes, thank you. Okay, and it works. So this way of defining classes is about, I don't know, like probably 10 times slower. Uh, but this is very useful if you want to create anonymous classes. The thing with normal class definition is that if I have def my method, and here I want to define class, Ruby says that I cannot define class in a method, but I can do the same with creating class new. So if you ever have a case where you need to define class in a method, uh, you can do it only, only this way. Uh, okay, down to number four. Number four is a trick that I learned recently. If you have a class called struct, and you call struct new, and you say, let's say, this will be a user class. User has login and password. Struct new returns anonymous class, which itself is not a struct. So user is this. So as you see, user class is not struct class. So struct.new doesn't return a struct. It returns something else. And it was bothering me. How is it possible? Because if I define my class, 
and I have initializer. And I want to return user instead of new user. It still, it still defines, it still returns new user. It doesn't return user. It doesn't return what I want. So what I realized is that initialize method is an is an instant method. It is called on an object that is already created. And what I need to do is I need to override the method that that is responsible for creating object. So how do I do it? And as you see now, new user dot new returns my my struct, which is user that consists of login and password. So, uh, if you have, uh, there are some ideas that you can use this trick for. It's not very popular, but struct I think it's the best example. I use this class very very often, and and I want I wanted to know how it works. Now number five, cloning objects. So cloning objects creates new object. Let's say I have object is object dot new. And if I type object clone, I have, as you see, it's a different, it has different object ID than the previous one. Another method of po another possibility is to object dot dab, which creates yet another object. And people very often confuse this method. They think that they are exactly the same, that there are aliases. But there is one simple thing uh, that differs these two methods. Let's say that I have my object uh, and I have a uh, module A. So now I have my object and I extend it with module A. So is A A? It is. So my object is now extended with the module A. Now, if I up my object, it appears that it drops the module that it extends, with, that it that it was extended with, and if I use clone, it keeps them. So if you sometimes extend your objects and if you clone them, just remember that these methods are not are not exactly the same. Uh, they are a bit different. And these were the five tips, but I've got something else, something that I think it's quite interesting. Since we realized that class is a is an object, and that we can create new class, uh, and we can provide some parent class. What happens if I want to inherit class from a class? Anyone has an idea what will happen? No, my computer will not burn. Object will not be created. Ruby has a, has a special message. It says that you cannot make subclass of class. This made me a bit sad because I wanted to play with this a bit more. <laughs> Thank you very much for listening. Okay, you have any questions? Yes. Wait, what is your favorite go-to use case for structs? For structs? Uh, so I wrote this simple library that is called simple operation, and this operation class actually wraps around, uh, like it behaves like a struct. I provide a class that takes uh, parameters and it has just one method. So this class has similar interface to a method, but it allows me to use instance, uh, instance variables and similar stuff inside. So I just called simple operation dot new, then I provide parameters and these parameters inside my class are, are turned into private readers, and I have access to them inside, inside this class. So there is a gem you can see on my GitHub. It's called simple underscore operation, and I use some of this stuff that I show here. Cool. Any more questions? OK, thanks. Thank you. Uh, to round us off, Winston's going to say a couple of things now. Um, Let me get you set up.